Sahel Anthropus chadensis, with a name that literally means the Sahel man from Chad. This is a species that lived in what is now West Central Africa six to seven million years ago, and is the oldest species from which we can guess the human lineage evolved from. Much about it remains a mystery. However, today I'm gonna go over what we know about it so we can consolidate our knowledge together. So first, let's look at the fossil evidence. The first and so far the only fossils that have been found from this species were found in Taurus Manala in northern Chad. These were uncovered in 2001 by French paleoanthropologist Michael Brunette, whose name I absolutely just butchered, and his associates. The species wasn't actually written up and unveiled until 2002. Now alongside some isolated mandibular fragments, which is what Michael Brunette calls them, and dentition, otherwise known as jaws and teeth, there was the most famous of all the fossils which you have possibly seen, nicknamed Tumai. Now it is essentially a cranium that was somewhat crushed and although it has been digitally reconstructed since, it is the face of Sahelanthropus. Now everyone gives these bones a rough estimation of six to seven million years of age. However, using what I believe is called cosmogenic nuclear dating, they were able to date the sediments in which the fossils were lead to a range of 7.2 to 6.8 million years ago. Now this discovery in general shocked paleoanthropologists because before this fossils especially of much older hominins had only been found in East Africa around the Rift Valley and in South Africa. So to see that hominins were actually spread across the continent was quite the shock. They were really fighting demons in every corner. Now of course we've got some criticism of these remains. Some people say that because this fossil has quite a significant brow ridge, but kind of smaller teeth than a lot of other apes, this is one possible reason that people have said it looks somewhat human-like. However, this is slightly on the basis of this fossil being male, which we do not know. And if this fossil was actually female, then this brow to teeth size ratio would kind of balance itself out to be within the usual range of what apes look like. So this was one argument against why this fossil should be included in the human lineage. Additionally, as we most famously know, if you look at the foramagnum, which is the hole in which the spine joins to the cranium and up into the brain, in chimpanzees, this hole sits pretty far back. In modern humans, it sits fairly centrally. Now, with Sahelanthropus, it kind of sits in between. So this means that it was most likely not facing forward on all fours like a chimp. It was potentially doing a bit of both. It was potentially bipedal, therefore making it human. Additionally, we have no completely verified femur or pelvis specimens from which we could make some more clear distinctions about their locomotion. And as critics of Brunette wrote, the taxonomic value and functional significance of shortened cranial base and foramen magnum position are unclear. However, even if it turned out to be a relative of chimps, this would be the best oldest preserved ape fossil ever found and give us a better idea of the way in which apes were evolving in the late Miocene. Now, this moves us on to physical appearance. So what is so striking about Sahelanthropus? Well, firstly, we've said the foramen magnum. Now, because this is a very human-like characteristic, we have several other characteristics joining this in the human category. One being, although it does have quite a sloping face, it is much flatter than the vast majority of apes. As we said, it's got small canine-like teeth, and some people have studied the wear of the neck muscles on the skull. Some people have said it wears like a quadruped, however, some people have said that in the back of the skull, the muscle wear is a, much like that of a biped. So the argument continues to rage, really. Generally speaking, it has quite a few similarities to Ardipithecus, except for a few minor differences. The tooth enamel thickness, which we will get onto later, is in between that of Ardipithecus and modern living apes. It is on the thicker end of things. As a narrow U-shaped dental arch, upper and lower premolars with two roots, and body-wise, it was about the same size as a modern-day chimpanzee, with a brain size estimated to be about 320 to 380 cubic centimetres, which is about also the same as a modern-day chimp. However, did they live in the same way as a modern-day chimp? Well, the habitat of the late Miocene. 
as written in the paper, the mammal assemblage of the hominid site TM266, Late Miocene Chad Basin. My Cabrini and associated colleagues explain that this paleo environment was composed of open areas with dry grasslands alongside forested areas. However, it's also likely that there was a lot of swamps and maybe marsh type environments because there are evidence of large bodies of fresh water around this area. As they write, it appears that the high habitat diversity of the landscape is a common feature among paleo environments associated with early hominids. This is really evidenced through the findings of several thousand vertebrate species that, that were aged to around the same date, including elephants, giraffes, hippos, monkeys, lizards, fish, and wild boar. And all of these creatures really bring us onto the question, what did they eat? Now, at this time, meat-eating apes were not around. They were vegan, they were raw-dogging it. They were like, we can't hunt yet, we have no tools, RIP. And as a result, it was most likely a plant eater. Now, by this point, it had evolved to be able to eat nuts and seeds and fruit and fibrous grasses and things like that. And as I mentioned earlier, the tooth enamel thickness was thicker than that of modern day chimpanzees and therefore it's likely that its food was quite tough and rough and gnawy with the occasional insect thrown in there. So maybe not completely vegan. So where does it sit on the human family tree? Great question. I am gonna be making this PowerPoint as I make this series, however long this takes me, possibly years, who knows. And this sits at the very beginning because the beginning is a great place to start. At six to seven million years ago, though we do not know that it's 100% the start of the human lineage, it is the closest that we can get within the fossil record. And as a result, although we cannot link any subsequent species directly back to it, it is sitting way in the back, supporting the rest of the species as they evolve. Except it wasn't because it was dead by that point. But that is my overview. I feel like that was really rambly, but um, yes. I will be making a few more of these, I think, maybe and hopefully you enjoy them. Thanks for watching, goodbye.